Alrighty, welcome everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us today um, to our virtual college exploration. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We have a few house rules that we need to go over ahead of time. So um, again, this is for our virtual college exploration for all Indiana students. Um, so if you're wondering, how do I ask questions during this? I'd love to know more. Um, definitely use that Q&A button to type your questions and the presenter can see it and he can address it at any time during the presentation. Um, your camera and microphone is off. So um, definitely take advantage, relax. Um, we're gonna be doing all the talking. Um, so we can't see or hear you. So if you do have questions, please utilize that Q&A button. Um, if you'd like to know more about other universities that are going to be presenting, definitely take advantage of more sessions. Um, this is actually the first day. We're going to have more through the next uh, end of next week. So if you go to the website listed, inac.org slash virtual college exploration, it can go ahead and get you into the right area. So this presentation will be recorded. So if you would like to refer back to anything, um, definitely take advantage of that and all other sessions will be as well. So I'm actually going to turn this over to our presenter. Um, he's going to kind of talk about his university and we look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Go ahead, John. Well, hi there. I'm John Waldo and I am the uh, an admissions counselor for Kettering University and I'm just going to get my screen shared over here. Make sure that I've got which which one I've got shared. So there we go. Share computer sound and share. All right. So uh, I'm an admissions counselor for Kettering University. I'm excited to help you learn about Kettering as you're exploring your college options. At Kettering, uh, we like to use the phrase, feel your ambition and accelerate your future, because that's what you really can do as a, with a Kettering University education. So we're laser focused on what we do. We specialize in STEM. So we don't have hundreds and hundreds of um, majors that you can pick from. We just have 14 because we know what we do well and we do it really, really well. So we specialize in STEM, so science, technology, engineering, math, and then we also have a management degree. And then we also have a great pre-med course of study. So our newest major is a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering with concentrations in advanced manufacturing systems, mechatronic systems, and robotic systems. In addition to our majors, students can choose from many different specialties and concentrations. We've been a national leader in experiential STEM education since we began over 100 years ago. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So one of the things that makes us uh, special, uh, that's been rec we've been recognized by the Wall Street Journal we, as uh, being number one nationally for career preparation. And, and we'll talk about why we do that in just a second. Really what it comes down to is that we're a co-op school, meaning that you will alternate between doing co-op and doing academics at the university. So different colleges and universities uh, may suggest that you do, a, do an internship sometime during your college career. Usually it's often between your uh, junior and senior year. It's over a summer. It may or may not be paid. But at Kettering, we integrate the whole idea of co-op into your program. You're required to do five co-op experiences. You can do up to nine. And you basically what happens is you alternate three months on campus with academics, with three months in a paid professional co-op experience where you are working. So if you're an engineering major, you are doing engineering. If you're a biology major, you are working in a lab or somewhere doing biology. If you are a pre-med student, then you are actually working in a, in a clinic or some clinical opportunity where you are gaining experience, which is one of the reasons that our pre-med students actually get into medical school at twice the rate of the national average. So our entire educational model is built on this idea of hands-on education. We don't believe in just having you sit in a lecture hall with two to 300 other students and then just you know, be lectured at and have to figure out what, you know, how to do engineering or how to do biology or chemistry from a book. We are actually all about hands-on. So we keep our class sizes small. Um, you get to know your professors really, really well. But the key thing is, is that every other three months, you're gonna be out in a paid professional work experience, putting into practice what you've been learning in the classroom. And I know I've said paid, but I want you to know that over the course of the four and a half years that you, were, that you would be a Kettering student, there are anywhere between forty-five to seventy thousand dollars, and then that's money that comes directly to you, and then you can either use it to invest in your career, invest in your education. You can use it to buy a car, or whatever. You kind of work that all out with with your family. 
Um, but most of our students are go-getters, they're tactile learners, they love to do things hands-on. And uh, so that's really the heart of what we do. We've been doing it this way since 1919. So our origin is that uh, we started with General Motors and we were General Motors Institute up until the, the late 90s. And uh, so General Motors would send their employees to us to get the education. And then they would go out and they would practice uh, what they're learning. And so that's what we've been doing for over 100 years. So here's just a few of our co-op partners. We've got over 400 partners that we work with. We have them all over the country. We have them in Indiana as well. And so these are obviously some very recognizable names. So what you do as a co-op student is a, it's a three-way partnership between you, the university, and our co-op partners. So it's a real job search, so you actually have to look for the job, but we have a co-op manager who will be assigned to you. We have co-op partners that love Kettering students, and then there's the work that you do. So it's that, kind of that, that three-way partnership. And this starts as early as your freshman year. So a lot of other colleges and universities, if you do a co-op or if you do internship, it may not be until the end of your sophomore year or later. We actually have students who graduate from high school and then they actually start their co-op the term before they become students at Kettering. So it's a great opportunity to get in there, get your hands dirty and to learn. And many times what happens is by the time you graduate, the co-op employer offers you a full-time job. And that's really the reason that they're in it is because they are, they look at this as an opportunity to develop potential future long-term employees. So, so, you, so you go back to the same co-op employer each, each time you have a co-op term. There is a possibility that you can change after the first couple if it's just not working out or if possibly you change your major. But our co-op employers absolutely love Kettering students. One of the stories that we like to tell is uh, we've had many situations where our Kettering co-op students wind up supervising internship students from other universities, including places like MIT. Because a lot of the other universities, they've just been sitting in a classroom for two and a half, three years, and then this is their first real work experience. Well, our, our students have already been doing the work for a couple of years. They know the company, and they, they know the, the, the policies and the procedures, and they know how things work, they know the people to get things done. And so our co-op students, even as early as sophomore year, wind up supervising juniors and seniors from other universities. And the cool thing about it is that by the time you graduate, you know exactly what, what you want to do and you've already been doing it. So here's a, a little bit about, uh, so what, this is the a video of our co-op fair. So the last couple co-op fairs have been virtual, but typically what happens is once you've been admitted, uh, we get you to, to fill out your resume in the way that our employers are used to. We have three co-op fairs. You come and you present yourself to co-op uh, employers and you, you, know, you practice your elevator pitch and you actually you know, work hard at presenting yourself. You know, hi, I'm John, I'm a chemical engineering major and I'm from Indiana and I'd like to work at your company or tell me, tell me about what a co-op student would do at your company. And so it's a, it's a real job search process in that sense. But again, these are co-op employers who love our students. And the, the benefit of it is that because you're graduating with up to two and a half years of experience uh, on your resume, um, most of our students receive a full-time job offer by the time they graduate, and the average starting salary for our 2019 graduates was over $85,000. So once you graduate, you don't just get an entry-level job doing engineering or science or chemistry or whatever. You get a, you oftentimes an, an intermediate-level job because you've already got experience with the company, and they already know that you know how to do what they want to do. So if you're looking for that university, it's going to help prepare you for your chosen field, that you'll make a ton of money when you graduate, and then you, you know, use that to help change the world, then Kettering is definitely the place for you. So a little bit about the university. So we are a smaller university. We have about 2,300 students total. About 1,800 of those are undergraduates. But because of our co-op model, only about half of the students are here at any one time. So about 900 students would be on campus at any one time. So we've got small classes. Um, all of our classes are taught by professors, about 94% of whom have their PhDs. At other large universities, you may be being taught by graduate assistants who might be two or three years older than you, and you might be in a lecture hall with three, four, 500 students. So we had a student who transferred in from a Big Ten University last year, and she came in as a junior, 
And I asked her the question, you know, why do you want to transfer at this point of your education? She said, quite frankly, I got sick of having 600 kids in my lecture classes. And I said, you're pulling my leg, right? You're exaggerating, right? She said, no. She said, we've got lecture halls with 650 seats in there. And if you don't get there early, you have a really hard time finding a seat. So, and she absolutely loves a smaller environment because you're not just a number, you're not just somebody on the assembly line. You get to know your faculty really, really well. You get to, to pull on their knowledge and their experience. And, you know, so our class sizes, average class size is about 20 students. Then as you progress through your, um, and through your career at Kettering, and as you start to specialize more and more, those class sizes might get a little bit uh, smaller. Lab sizes is about 13. And again, it may get a little bit smaller depending on what program you're in. So we are a smaller private university. And I do want to emphasize that for those of you in Indiana. So the price that you would pay would be the same price that a student from Michigan would pay because we're a private university. So it's a great opportunity to come and learn and to grow. So here's a short little video that talks about um, the, uh, the learning environment that we have here at Kettering. I knew coming to Kettering, I would get to go right in to working on engineering. To learning that skill set and those tools that I need to thrive in my career path. What I'm working on at work, I'll come back to school and work on the same thing. I'm trying to create more real-world classroom and laboratory experiences for the students on the way through. This is my fourth year here now, and it's already changed so much while I've been here. There's been multiple different renovations, additions, so all the D spaces, the library's been renovated. With the Mobility Research Center and then also the First Robotics Community Center, it gives me that sneak peek into what I will actually be working with down the line. My favorite place to study is the D space. I'm in one of the D spaces basically every single weekday. There was an old abandoned room that became a study space. Now it's got yeah, TVs on the walls for collaborative lab work and whiteboards everywhere. We've been able to create places where you can move from the classroom into the lab back and forth. We have our T space, which stands for Think, Tinker and Thrive. People can go in there, you can work on any like projects you want. There's 3D prints in there, laser cutters. Kettering Bill is really like, you're already prepared for whatever's about to come at you. I feel like Kettering has provided a place for me to really thrive as myself. It's not the school you left it as. You definitely want to come back because the school is not nearly the same as what you saw before. So that's just a little bit about our learning environment from a couple of uh, one current and one past student. So a lot of times people want to know, so, you know, how do I apply? So our application opens every year at uh, on uh, August 1st. And so if there are those of you that are juniors, then you would wait until next August 1st. For those of you that are seniors, it is open now. Our application is free and you can apply either through our application or through the common app. And, and uh, we are now test optional as most universities are right now. And uh, I think, did I mention that the application, yeah, I think I mentioned the application is free. So the only other thing that we would need once you submit your application is to have, for you to have your high school send your official high school transcript. Um, if you want to submit uh, ACT or SAT scores because you feel like it might, you might need to have those scores to help boost um, your application, then you're welcome to send those. That's not a problem. Um, so, uh, so you could, but the, if, you, if you haven't had a chance to take the ACT or the SAT, that's not going to hurt you. If you submit scores and your ACT or SAT were not that great, then that's not going to hurt you at all. We don't, we don't even take that into consideration. Um, in terms of like, so what have students had in the past? So in the past, um, our average GPA for last year's incoming freshman class was a 369. Um, average ACT was 27 and average SAT was a 1279. In terms of what we're looking for, in terms of your ac academic background, we're looking for at least two years of algebra with a semester of trigonometry, two lab sciences, one of which must be chemistry or physics, and three years of English. 
If at some point you're looking at transferring, we're looking for a 3.0 or higher GPA with evidence of strong math and lab sciences. Now, we look at your application holistically, but we want to make sure that, that you're up to what the Kettering standards are and that you're challenging yourself uh, academically, especially in math and science. You're not required to send letters of recommendation, but you're more than welcome to include those with your application. And you can find all that information on our website um, at kettering.edu forward slash admissions. When you're ready to apply, you can just apply at kettering.edu forward slash apply. So it's kind of, kind of really easy to, to figure out. So uh, we do encourage all students to fill out the FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid. That application is open right now. Uh, make sure that you're choosing Kettering University and not Kettering College, which is over in Ohio. So that's our code there, 002262. Um, almost all of our students receive some type of financial aid. Uh, the first off would be merit scholarships and those will range next year anywhere from $8,500 uh, $8, to $17,500. Um, you also, again, will earn anywhere from ten dollars to $15,000 a year in your co-op. We also have need-based assistance um, and work-study assistance. And like I said, about 99% of our students receive some type of, uh, scholar or of uh, merit aid or some other type of gift aid. And then in addition to that, there are multiple scholarships that you can apply for. Some have deadlines and some do not. You know, so for example, if you're into coding and programming or if you're in DECA or BPA, um, if you're involved in a mobility or vehicle competition or if you're involved in robotics, we have scholarship applications where you can uh, fill those out. I think those are usually either February 1st or March 1st. You can find that information on the website. Uh, we also have something called Kettering Recognizes Excellence, which is also a scholarship that you can uh, fill out. You know, maybe you're an Eagle Scout or um, you've done, you've started a business or you've overcome some major challenge in your life. So those are scholarships that you can apply for. One other thing that I want to point out is that Kettering has what's called a fixed tuition guarantee. And basically what that means is whatever you pay the first term that you start at Kettering, you're going to pay for the next 10 academic terms. So the, our, our uh, tuition doesn't go up. So if you wait a year to come to Kettering, then it may be a higher tuition rate at that time. But whatever you pay when you first get here, that will be your tuition rate when you for, uh, for the remainder of your time at Kettering. A lot of other universities, you know, there's a freshman rate. And then as you progress along, you know, there's either increases either in the tuition rate or you pay more and more each year. At Kettering, it's a fixed tuition, so you pay that same amount. The other thing where, um, that we like to talk about is the fact that we're a fee free school, which means you don't pay for parking, you don't pay for technology fees, you don't pay for student activity fees, everything is wrapped up in your tuition. And one of the questions that we often get from students is, can I have a car on campus as a freshman? And the answer is, yes, you can. You can actually register up to four cars. Like if you've got project cars and you want to, you know, work on them while you're a student at Kettering, you can bring those as well. So lots of scholarship opportunities. Um, and also, again, that fixed rate tuition guarantee is something that's, that's really, really helpful for our students. So one of the things that we're excited about, I was looking at this out, outside my office window today, is construction on our new learning commons. And this is going to be a really, really cool modern building. All kinds of glass, all kinds of meeting spaces, all kinds of technology. It's going to have all kinds of technology and rich gathering areas. It's going to have a new library, an open food court, a 300 seat auditorium, and all kinds of spaces where students can get together and study together and work together. So it's, that's really exciting. And that should be done by fall of 2022. So they were starting to add the, the steel to the building today, which is really, really cool to watch that, that progression. So we're located in Flint, Michigan. So kind of a point of reference, we're just about five hours or just under five hours from Indianapolis. Um, we, Flint is the birthplace of General Motors. We're the home to the Crim Festival of Races, Back to the Bricks, uh, Car Show, the nationally recognized Flint Farmers Market. There's all kinds of things to do in the Flint area. And we are really proud to be part of that tradition of General Motors having started in Flint back in the early 1900s. In terms of campus life at Kettering, all of our students will live in Thompson Hall their first two academic terms. Uh, there are a few exceptions uh, to that, particularly for transfer students who are older or if, you're, if you've tra you're transferring in and you have already lived in a dorm uh, two terms somewhere else. Um, so the Thompson Hall rooms, you have a private room 
but then you have a pocket door that separates you and a suite mate. So you can have that privacy, but you can also have that roommate feel if you want. It's really, really cool. Um, after your first two terms, you can either continue to live in the dorm or there's all kinds of housing options that are available around campus. Lots of houses that are for rent. So as you build friendships or the other possibility is if you join a fraternity or a sorority, about 40% of our students are involved in Greek life. So we've got 14 fraternities and six sororities. And so that may be another housing option if you join a fraternity or sorority. So we also have about 60 student clubs and organizations. Uh, so our students love to get involved in fun stuff. Some of it's sports with intramurals and some of it's just clubs that get together and eat and do something. They might be service clubs, they might be activity clubs. So you know anything from the grill club where the university provides the meat and you just grill out and that's really, really fun. The cornhole club where, where they get together, they play, cor they play cornhole and they order Jimmy John's for lunch. Again, paid for by the university. Rockwall Climbing Club, those are just a few of the clubs. You can find all that on our, on our website. You can also participate in a number of professional organizations such as the Society of Women Engineers, the Asian American Association, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, and National Society of Black Engineers. And if there's an activity that we don't have, you just get two or three friends and you get together and we can have, help you start your own club for that activity. Uh, some of the intramural sports, um, you know, everything from flag football, soccer, volleyball, softball, and one of the favorites on campus is inner tube water polo. So all kinds of options uh, if you're into sports, even if you're like, like just want to just play sports just for fun and you're not that super competitive. Most of our intramurals have like a super competitive league and then kind of got total recreation. Hey, I think I saw a basketball once kind of a league. So, so whatever level you want to get involved with, you can do that. If you are a gamer, then you're gonna love Kettering because we are now participating in the National Association of Collegiate Esports and we're competing in League of Legends, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So uh, because of our strange academic schedule where you're in school for three months and then you're out in your uh, paid co-op for three months, um, we really don't have any way to compete intercollegiately in the traditional sports but we can compete in esports because when you're off in your co-op you can still be gaming at night because when you're doing co-op you don't have to do any schoolwork. so when you're in school you are intense in school but then you can kind of you know blow steam off by playing esports in the night and and competing you know and on the, the varsity team there but when you go off to your co-op it's a you know nine to five or seven to four or whatever job and your evenings and weekends are your own so if you're into gaming then kettering's got all kinds of options for you there. So if you're into cars or anything mechanical along that line, uh, we have five different teams that compete in the Society of Automotive Engineering Clubs. So we have um, the Auto Drive Challenge, we have Formula SAE, SAE Baja, SAE Clean Snowmobile, and SAE Aero Design. So for example, Formula SAE and Baja SAE, so they actually have to build those vehicles from scratch. And, our, and we compete against other universities and we do really, really well every year in those competitions. So, and even, even though we've been around for over a hundred years, we have state-of-the-art campus um, lab facilities and classrooms. You can, you can see those if you uh, come, if you do a virtual tour, you can see all the different classrooms and labs. Right now we are doing modified tours uh, and campus visits, so you can't see the labs right now, but you can see all of those on the, um, uh, on the, web, on the website. So I encourage you to take a look at that. In terms of our campus facilities, uh, we're one of the only universities in the country that has a mobility research center on campus. So we have the GM Mobility Research Center. So this is for autonomous vehicle design and testing. And students use that both with SAE as well as with coursework. And then companies can actually contact us and send a vehicle to us, even from like California and through our, our enclosed 5G uh, network at the, at the track, they can actually do autonomous vehicle testing from across the country at our, at, at our campus. We've got over 27,000 square feet of lab and research space, and this is available to you as an undergraduate, which is another distinctive at the Kettering. So at a lot of other universities, what happens is they, oh, we got all this great lab space, but many times what they don't tell you is that you can't access those until you're a graduate student 
well, Kettering, that's available to you. And we actually have uh, undergraduate students who are already published because they've either done their own research or they participated with professors in their research. So all kinds of opportunities to do research if that's something that you're interested in. We have Historic Atwood Stadium, which uh, used to be owned by the city of Flint, and it's, a, and it's an actual AstroTurf field. It's the home to the Flint City Bucks, which is a national championship uh, semi-pro soccer team. And then one of the things that we love to talk about is our first robotics community center. We're one of the only universities in the country that hosts nine uh, community-based robotics teams. So if you're involved in robotics at all in school, middle school, high school, especially for those of you that were involved in first robotics, you will love it at Kettering University. So we were the premier sponsor of the Student Lounge and Parent Lounge at the Detroit Worlds in 2019. And we would have been also in 2020 if COVID hadn't happened. Um, but about 30% of our students on campus were involved in robotics at some level uh, in high school. And if you're interested in continuing in robotics, you can do that not only through classes and majors, but you can also serve as a mentor or a coach for some of our community-based teams. So we love our robotics students. So if, if you enjoyed robotics, then you would definitely enjoy Kettering along that line. Um, also, if you are a junior or younger, we have all kinds of pre-college programs. Uh, most of them are available during the summertime. So one of them is LIGHTS, Lives Improved Through Engineering and Science. And that's specifically for rising senior females. It's a two week summer camp experience. We get to do a deep dive in all things science and engineering. This past summer, it was virtual, but even the students who participated in the virtual um, format really, really loved it. And we have Academically in, uh, Interested Minds, which is AIM. And that's a five week campus program for uh, minority students. And we have students from all over the country and the Bahamas and Jamaica who come for this. Um, and it's, a, it's an opportunity to take a college class and to, again, to do a deep dive in all things STEM. We've got all, all kinds of other opportunities such as Doctor for a Day, Women in STEM. So you can even check those out to see what kinds of programs we may have, we may have coming up yet this year. Again, some of those may be virtual this year, but if you're a younger student or if you have younger siblings, it may be an option to check out for down the road. So uh, we encourage you to uh, visit campus. So no matter what college you go to, I really want to encourage you to definitely go visit the campus if that's at all possible. So we have, like I said, we have modified campus tours right now where you can come and then we, we kind of walk you around. Our campus tour guides are phenomenal. They're students, you get to hear about their experiences, the co-op experiences, the classes they like, they like the classes they don't like. Um, uh, and at this point, pretty much it will just show you the outside of buildings, but it'll give you a sense of what the campus has to offer. Um, you can also do our virtual tour on campus. And then we have all kinds of virtual events that we are doing every week. So because again, we want to give you an opportunity to understand and experience what Kettering is like. You can access all of that from kettering.edu forward slash visit. Um, or you can use the QR code there and that will take you to the visit page. And also from the visit page, you can also find my contact information and even set up an opportunity for you or you and your parents to do a kind of a one-on-one -on -one video call with me and talk about you know, what Kettering has to offer and see if it's the right fit for you. But definitely whatever campuses or colleges you're looking at, definitely do a visit or do the, the, the tours to make sure that it's the right fit for you. So that's pretty much you know, what I have to share tonight. I know it's not quite a full 45 minute session, so that may give us an opportunity for some, some Q&A. If you're at all interested, you can do that in the Q&A uh, box. You can learn more at Kettering.edu. If you're ready to apply right now, you just go to Kettering.edu forward slash apply. That QR code that's there is direct, takes you directly to our application. Again, you can either apply through our app or through the Common app. Um, the QR code on the right is a direct link to my calendar if you'd like to set up uh, an opportunity to, to do a one-on-one -on -one phone call or video call. I absolutely love talking to students. I'm not gonna hard sell you. I wanna help you understand what Kettering is and, and you know, answer whatever questions that you may have about everything from, from co-op to the majors to you know, what financial aid is like, what campus life is like. So all those opportunities to talk about that. So that is what I have to share about Kettering University. I hope that you will uh, contact me. Um, really want to see those applications start pouring in from Indiana. We love our students from Indiana, so we'd love to have an opportunity to talk with you um, and see those applications come in. So now I guess it's an opportunity for any Q&A, um, and I'm just double checking here. 
right now it looks like we don't have any questions. So this is your opportunity to, um, uh, to, to weigh in and ask any questions. I'm gonna leave my screen up for right now until the facilitator says, let's take it down. Um, so then that way, if you wanna you know, click into the apply. Um, so you just let me know and if you got any questions and I'm not sure how long we wanna, we wanna wait, Amy, to see if there's any questions. It looks like everyone got their questions answered. Thank you so much, John, for your presentation. I know I learned a lot. So um, I just have a few um, housekeeping rules towards the end. Um, so again, thank you guys for joining us for our presentation. I really hope you got some really great information. Um, there's gonna be a quick survey. So um, after you close the window, you're gonna get a four question survey just to let us know what you thought and how we did and maybe any suggestions for next year. Again, if you would like to sign up for any more sessions, we would absolutely love for you to do that. And if you would like to go back and listen to this presentation again, these recordings will be available. So again, thank you, John, so much for presenting. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.